In this series of videos, we are going to look at process analysis, and we're going to start with the basic concepts and definitions, and then we're going to look at three examples. Typically in a process, it has two major components. One is activities or tasks. Those are the things we need to complete. The other one is the resources. The resource can be workers, machines, workstations, etc. You may think of this way. Activities and tasks are the demand. Resources are the supply. A key concept in process analysis is capacity. Actually, there are two kinds of capacity. One is resource capacity. The other is process capacity. Resource capacity is the uh, maximum amount that the resource can produce in a given time unit. And process capacity is defined as the minimum of the capacities of all the resources in this process. And one of the most important concepts in process analysis is the bottleneck. First and foremost, bottleneck is a resource or workstation. And bottleneck is the resource or workstation that has the smallest capacity. Keep in mind, in a process, we might have more than one bottleneck. There's an alternative way of measuring capacity. It's in the unit of time, could be minutes or hours or days. One good example is, okay, we work eight hours a day or the machine operates eight hours a day. And here's the reason why we want to do that. In many cases, a resource or workstation works on more than just one task or products. Different tasks or product take different amount of time at the same resource or workstation. Another very important concept in process analysis is the flow rate, aka throughput. Flow rate is the actual number of products or customers that pass through the process in a given unit of time. And more generally, the products or customers are called flow units. And flow rate is determined by the minimum of available input rate, demand rate, and process capacity. We are going to use this concept and this formula extensively in the following examples. Once we have defined flow rate and capacity, we are going to define utilization. Utilization is the ratio between flow rate and capacity. And this concept of utilization can be applied to resources and process. And resource utilization is the flow rate divided by resource capacity. Similarly, process utilization is flow rate divided by process capacity. Utilization is always less than or equal to 1 because flow rate is the minimum of input rate, demand rate, and capacity. So flow rate is always less than or equal to capacity. Another similar concept is implied utilization. The definition of implied utilization is demand rate divided by capacity. Implied utilization is greater than or equal to utilization. Take a look, the two denominators are the same, but look at and compare those two numerators. Demand rate is always greater than or equal to the flow rate. Also, it is possible that implied utilization is greater than 1 or 100%. That will happen when demand rate is greater than or equal to the capacity. Next, let's look at our first example. Let's consider a process consisting of three resources, one, two, and three. If you don't feel comfortable with the notion resource, 
you can simply think of them as workstations. Workstation 1, 2, 3, or resource 1, 2, or 3. The processing time in minutes per unit is 10 minutes per unit at resource 1, 16 minutes per unit at resource 2, and this process time is measured on a per worker basis. In addition, we know that there are two workers at resource 1 or workstation 1, one worker at resource 2, and three workers at resource or workstation 3. And once again, I want to emphasize that the processing time is actually minutes per unit of product per worker. Based on the information provided, we would like to answer the following questions. A. What is the bottleneck? B. What is the process capacity? C. What is the flow rate if demand is 8 units per hour? And D. What is the utilization of each resource if demand is 8 units per hour? Next, I'm going to turn to my Excel spreadsheet to answer each of those questions. In my Excel spreadsheet, I have already prepared the basic information we need. And here in this table, we have the uh, original information from the problem itself. In addition, I add two columns. One is the hourly capacity in units per hour. And in F column, we have the utilization. Question A, we would like to find the bottleneck. Let's see how we're going to do that. In step one, we're going to compute hourly capacity of each resource or workstation. You may wonder why hourly capacity? Because later on, the given demand rate will be A units per hour. So we want to make sure the time unit is consistent. But if you don't mind the uh, complexity, you can go ahead and calculate, say, daily capacity and so on and so forth. All right, let's see how we're going to calculate hourly capacity. Let's look at resource one first. At resource one, it takes one worker 10 minutes to process one unit. That is to say, in one hour, one worker can process 60 divided by 10, that is six units, but we have two workers at resource 1 or workstation 1. Therefore, the capacity at resource 1 is 12 units per hour. And we can do the same thing for resource 2 and resource 3. All right, once we found hourly capacity of each resource, it is very easy to find our bottleneck. Simply recall that bottleneck is the resource that has the smallest capacity. In this case, it's nothing but resource 2. Resource 2's capacity is 10, which is smaller than that of all the other resources. Next, let's look at question B. What is the process capacity? And this is also an easy question. Recall that process capacity is determined by the minimum capacity of all the resources. By definition, bottleneck is the one that has the smallest capacity. Therefore, process capacity is equal to the bottleneck capacity, which is 10, the capacity of resource 2. Question C, what is the flow rate if demand is 8 units per hour? Recall that flow rate is the minimum of demand rate, capacity, and input rate. But in this case, input rate is not available. So we're just going to consider demand rate and process capacity. 
Let's take a look. Demand rate is 8 units per hour. Process capacity is 10 units per hour. Obviously, demand rate is the one that is going to determine the flow rate of our process. So it's going to be 8. Last but not the least, we're going to find the utilization of each resource if the demand is 8 units per hour. From question C, we know that if the demand rate is 8 units per hour, the flow rate will be equal to 8 units per hour as well. To find utilization, recall that the formula is flow rate divided by capacity. We are going to calculate all the utilizations in F column. It's going to be equal to flow rate, and here I'm going to use absolute cell reference, divided by capacity. Once we have the formula, we can basically copy paste the formula. And let's take a look. Utilization of resource 1 is 2 thirds or 66.7%. Utilization of resource 2 is 80% and utilization of resource 3 is 71%. Of course, if you would like to find process utilization, it is going to be flow rate 8 divided by process capacity 10. It's also going to be 0.8 or 80%.